Let's get some sports talk. I'm seeing that, but how these two could kind of work together to be official. So the beautiful thing about team sports is we're going to law LeBron James and AD, and rightfully so, as two of the top five players in the game. But I think the person that's going to unlock their attack has to be Kyle Kuzma. Mm-hmm. They need to be a big three, not an outstanding two. And if he continues to take a leap this season like he took last year, that's why I feel like they have the size up front with those three people, JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard, to overcome, for example, a smaller team up front like the Clippers. No, it, it, that, that size that you were talking about, one of the things that you didn't point out and you did not miss much was that if Anthony Davis shoots that, there's a small that's going to have to crack back on Dwight Howard or JaVale McGee. Like that type of uh, uh, paint presence and offensive rebounds and second shots, now that you add that with the shooting that, they, that they've added with Danny Green, just a, a better floor spacing opportunities, they're, they're the biggest team that I've seen in a long time and they're going to play a different style that's going to be tough to handle. I know we don't hit it much, but AD mentioned it earlier before the the season that he wants both of them to be on the all defensive team. Let's talk defense. Is this going to be a good defensive team? It'll be. A, I think there's sides. There'll be a, get a lot of deflections and blocks, but I don't. I don't think I want LeBron Correct. to waste all of his energy trying to defend the other team's best player. Like I need LeBron to be healthy down the stretch. I need LeBron to be healthy and ready to go in the playoffs. And I don't need. I focus on offense. And, and, and that's why for the Lakers. Whenever Andre Iguodala becomes available in Memphis, they're going to try to trade him between now and the February deadline. But short of that, he'll eventually get a buyout if there's no trade, and he'll be able to sign with whoever he wants, and that will be that is going to be between the Lakers and the Clippers. And Iguodala has this. Yeah, uh, Kuzma take a big step this year like he did last year, and I feel like he's going to take that big step. And I feel like they're going to be a big three with him. I feel like they are their big three because the step he already took last season. And I feel like it's okay on to this season once he once he's healthy and be ready to play. He had 100%. The Lakers be in good shape. They already in good shape with LeBron and AD. But with Kuzma coming to his own this year, again, it's going to make him a more dangerous team. As he um, um progress, like how he did last year, I feel like he gonna take another step this year because uh, he gonna counter from last year to this year, and I feel like Lakers got a solid team this year. They gonna do gonna do good things this year because once once Kuzma's healthy from his um ankle injury, it's gonna be good. And um, if they trade for uh, Andre Iguodala, that's Championship experience in that locker room. Another veteran in that locker room that could uh, help this team out. Where LeBron already won the championship, and Iguodala already won the championship, and Rondo. Having no three there, teach everyone around on that team to know how to go out there and win it. Go out there and win the championship. And had a pedigree of playing good defense to win one. I feel like they will be a good def- defensive team. They're not going to make LeBron do too, too much on the defensive side. They're going to let him reserve his energy and somebody will step up and help him out to keep him fresh for the playoffs. See, he can watch the season develop now. Watch if there's an injury somewhere that maybe changes a team's title hopes, but he can really see where he fits in uh, where his impact can be, but it will be between uh, the two LA teams. All right, let's talk about more teams just in California in general, Woj. And I know that you have more insights with the Warriors, but we're talking about dynamic twos, Steph Curry and D'Angelo Russell, the fit there. I mean, what are you hearing about the way that they're working together and figuring out how to start this season together? Yeah, Maria, I had talked to D'Angelo Russell earlier today after their shoot around, uh, and he was just raving about how welcoming Steph Curry has been to him and how he has. Um, allowed him to help, you know, start learning to play to D'Angelo's strengths. He says, all the things you hear about Steph and you imagine what it might be like, he said, I underestimated all of it. And he said, it isn't just on the floor and how he works. And he's the first guy in the gym. He gets his work done. He said, but I find myself watching him on the bus, how he talks to people, how he interacts in the locker room, the way he leads. 
uh, he, he said that he had been telling his own brothers the other day. I found myself just staring at him. And I talked to Bob Myers, their GM. He's watched Steph Curry through the years integrate Clay Thompson, Iguodala, Kevin Durant, and and. Part of it, what Bob says, is there's never drama mm -hmm. with Steph Curry. He, he gives you a feeling in that locker room that everything's going to be okay, and he brings calm to it. And when you're coming into a new team, that really helps. Maybe that's an underrated strength that we don't talk about that much. We've gone straight to the court with how their games kind of fit together. Um, but the value of Steph, one of those stars that doesn't seem like he has the ego of a star. Would fit with anyone. Absolutely. And allow Draymond Green to emerge as the vocal leader mm -hmm. of the team. And when you have that level of humility, the one thing I say about players like Steph, if he didn't have basketball, he would still be successful at life. Mm -hmm. So he's comfortable in his own skin. I'll take less to integrate Kevin Durant. Boogie Cousins will take less to integrate them. But now that they're gone and Clay's going to be hurt, it's going to be MVP type Steph again. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think Steph's going to be a volume shooter. He's going to put up a lot of points. He'll be in that MVP conversation. What I do worry about is where they go defensively. This is a team they lost Andre Godala. They lost Sean Livingston, two guys that played critical roles for them. Now what happens when you want to have two dynamic players on the court together in D'Lo and Steph, that makes you a liability mm -hmm. defensively. I, look, I watched that whole game. There were multiple clips yeah. of them where they're you not even hide in one, the but play. Not two. Yeah. Not even in the play. That's why my thing is, and also if Steph is a volume shooter, like I, I just get, I'm not sure D'Lo is good playing without the basketball. He's used to having the ball in his hands. That's why I don't know it's, if I see this team it's, making the playoffs. Defense and how unproven that bench is. They're going to have to play a lot of young players who have not proven themselves in the NBA yet. Look, I, I believe that the Warriors are going to be very good. I think they're going to be talented. What's very good? Very good. I, very good. I think they'll make the postseason. I think they'll make the postseason, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know where they're going to lie, but this is one thing that people don't fully understand about Steph. He is still a smaller guy. We're not talking about James Harden that's going to get some knick-knack free throws, some like ticky-tack ones. We're not talking about LeBron James that's just big. We're going to ask a smaller guy to go out there and play 42 minutes. Yep. He's going to run around like a madman without a Clay Thompson out there for the first time in his career, he has not had the second or third best shooter in the world on his team. So we're going to go ask him to average 35, get beat up nonstop. He, you're going to be able to trap him, and you never were really able to do that before because you had Klay Thompson and other guys there. So we're going to ask a lot from Steph, ask him to run around a ton and to get a beating in order to average that Raymond 30 score. And, 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 score. We'll and how about you guys being this you, not Steph? You're going to ask Steph Curry to do something this year that he hasn't had to do a lot the last few years. Play the fourth quarter of games, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. facts. <laughs> You're going to be in games yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports analysis and highlights, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.